It, well, Bob, so, so I wonder if you could tell me a, a bit about, uh, you know, your, your connections, your background uh, related to board games. How did you get started with board games? What, what attracted you? What still attracts you? Well, so I always loved games. Um, even when I was a child, uh, I can remember, you know, playing Monopoly with my family. Uh, my family was very much into card games. So I learned to play poker when I was about seven or eight years old. And I can still remember sitting around the table with my uncle and my grandma and my cousin and whoever else might happen to be at a holiday gathering with poker chips out in front of me playing for, you know, nickels and dimes. Um, so I learned the order of all the hands pretty young. <laughs> Which is kind of a funny thing because then I became a statistician when I grew up and I um, now I can compute the probabilities of all the hands and I understand why they are ordered the way they are in terms of precedence. Um, uh, I, had, I had a couple of friends in high school. We were early adopters of Dungeons and Dragons, which I no longer play. I haven't, I haven't role played uh, since my first couple years of college, uh, but still seriously into all other kinds of strategy games. Um, not a lot with computer games, not interested in that technology per se, uh, more so in, in standard board games and card games. And um, so my wife and I share this interest and when we really got serious about it was probably about 15 years ago when we first learned about Origins Game Fair, which is held in Columbus, Ohio every summer. And we went and we were kids in a candy store we literally came home with something like 40 new games um, that summer, which was more, probably 30 more than we needed because a lot of them sat in the shrink wrap for several years before we took them back and traded them for other games. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been interested in games for as long as I can remember. Um, card games, board games, any kind of strategy game, started playing chess at an early age. Um, it's just a great way to pass the time with friends and, and it's, it's our primary social outlet at this point. Oh, excellent. Well, do you, do you, do you find, uh, you know, in your interactions with people that many people share interest in games or do you find that you have to be a bit of a game evangelist or <laughs> well, how does that well, work out? So, so a large part of our social circle is now comprised of gamers <laughs> 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 and, um, there are actually people who are worse junkies than we are, <laughs> which is saying something because we probably own three to 400 games at this point. Uh, um, some of them are frequently played. Some of them are never or rarely played. Um, we, we certainly introduce new people to new games whenever we get a chance. Um, I think people may just know about games that are maybe sort of antagonistic where you're trying to beat down your opponent in some way or another, but there's all kinds of games. And so I, I guess, um, you know, we do, we are evangelists. We have my younger brother uh, and his family. They play a lot of games with us now, whereas 10 years ago, I don't think they played games at all. Uh, we usually bring games to family gatherings. My, my wife's younger sister and her family, we play with them. Um, anytime we have a family gathering and we now play with them online with the pandemic, we, we've been playing board games virtually. Hmm. Oh, that was, uh, yeah, so it's, it's great to have that kind of a community that you've built up and that can, can, can you know, be sustained even in this time, right? So that's Absolutely. Great. So when we first moved to Oxford, we found out there was um, a standing game group that met on Friday nights. Um, faculty and staff members at the university, pretty much everybody in the group. And the guy who normally put it together and hosted was out on sabbatical the first year that we were here. And so we actually started hosting. We sort of um, integrated in with his group and we had a house that allowed us to host and lots and lots of games. So we started hosting. And then when he came back, he started hosting again. Uh, which is great. So until the pandemic came, every Friday night, that's where we would be at Peter's house playing playing board games. Um, and then with the pandemic, we lasted about a week and a half without gaming with each other. And then Peter discovered a great website that has hundreds of board games um, built in 
Uh, and we we now play on Friday nights. And the great thing about this is one of the one of the beloved members of our group moved to Colorado about a year and a half ago, hmm. and so was no longer in the group. And now we game virtually, and so he's able to do it. Although we're looking forward to the human interaction again when when the pandemic allows. Sure, sure. Yeah. But it's, um, it's, yeah. it's a great benefit to have Ben back in the group because the format allows for, for it. Definitely. Yeah, that's, that is kind of the, I, I do feel the magic of this time that you can reconnect with people because everybody has to connect that way. So it's not unusual to have the one person or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's really true. We have... We have three standing uh, uh, standing board game appointments each week on the website. It's called Board Game Arena. Yeah. And um, Friday nights we play with the Oxford group, usually on Sunday afternoon, the time depending on what time the New Orleans Saints are playing. Mm. We play with um, my sister-in-law and her family because they live in New Orleans and we're all big Saints fans. Uh -huh. We don't always get their games here, but they always get them there. So yeah. all we have to do is look at the Saints schedule to see what time we'll be playing. <laughs> um, and then Monday night, we play with a friend of ours from graduate school. Hmm. Oh, so, cool. yeah, so we're on. And now my younger brother is talking about getting on and playing. So it may become four nights a week. Uh, well, I, you talked a little bit about this earlier, uh, the sense that, you know, sometimes people think of um, games as always being, you know, adversarial or uh, you know, in, in more of a, a warfare kind of way or whatnot. But um, what what are there other misconceptions you feel people have about games or gaming? Uh, um, I, I think I think that that is a big misconception that games are all about you know people think about risk or monopoly, which is actually a terrible game. <laughs> uh, you're trying to monopoly. A lot of people don't know this was initially invented by somebody who wanted to warn people about the evils of unfettered capitalism. Mm. So the game is meant to be an object lesson in um, why unfettered capitalism is not necessarily the best way to go. Oh, um, <laughs> so, you know, Monopoly is a grueling game where you're trying to grind your, your opponents into bankruptcy risk. You're trying to take over the world and wipe out everyone else's armies. Mm -hmm. These are not the only kinds of games out there. Um, there are games that are 180 degrees different where they're actually cooperative. Mm. So my wife's favorite board game, this is going to sound really bad, but it's a board game called Pandemic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and in this game, you have two to four, I think it may play with, I think it only plays four, two to four. Uh, you're working cooperatively mm. to cure four uh pandemics and you're moving around the board and, and you're you're sort of planning out your turns together to make sure oh there's a hot spot in brazil where we need to take out you know we need to make sure we cure the the disease that's there mm -hmm. um so you're working together and the other interesting thing about that game you know in monopoly and chess and risk everyone has the same objective mm -hmm. um or the same no i mean to say the same abilities mm -hmm. but in pandemic you also have one ability. Each player has a special ability that the other players don't have. Mm. So figuring out how to use your special ability in an optimal way to mesh with the other player's special abilities is, is it's a really fun puzzle to solve. Uh, there are also games where you're competing, but it's not in as directly an adversarial kind of way mm. where you're, you're basically trying to build something. Um, and so a good example of this would be Roll for the Galaxy, which is a really great dice game. It's one of, it's one of our very favorites. Uh, you're building a tableau and you're scoring points based on what you have done, but you're not attacking anyone. It's, um, there is interaction, so it's not like a solitaire game, but it's not like I say, my ray guns attack your planet. Instead, it's more like you get to the game end condition and I have 42 points and you have 47, so you win. Uh -huh. um, so there, there are games of all different varieties like that. And uh, there are also games where each player has a secret victory condition and, and they differ. So I might be trying to get 50 gold pieces and you may be trying to control six territories or whatever it might be. So there's a wide variety of games out there. And I guess what I would say to anyone is if you spent a couple hours with me and I showed you some games and talked you through, 
I believe I could find games that almost anyone would like. I will say almost, because some people just say, I don't want to spend my time with that. And I understand that. Um, you know, I feel the same way about watching car racing. I love fast cars, but I don't want to watch a car race. <laughs> so, um, but I think there are games out there for everyone. And it's kind of a golden age of gaming right now. I would say over the last 30 years, games have taken light years steps forward in terms of the variety, in terms of it's not just humiliate your opponent. <laughs> uh, there are games like that, but we don't tend to play them. You make a very strong case for um, everyone to give it a, give games a chance, even if you haven't. I, and I know that yes, it, I, I know of people who are not particularly game interested at all, or really, at least, I don't know what, how their whole lives have been, but they definitely talk against them now. At least. So I don't know sure. what their whole experiences are, but so I know they're out there. I know there are people. Yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, I think a good game has an appropriate level of decision making. And that's one variable that's different for everybody. Hmm. Right. So I like games with a certain level of decision making, but if you hand me a 47 page rule book, and it seems more complicated than supplying the troops in World War II, I am not going to want to play that game. <laughs> uh, one of my rules of thumb is that the shorter the rules of a game, typically the better the game is. So that's been my experience. Um, but some people like that level of complexity. Um, the kind of game you might like also might depend on how competitive you are. If you just want to spend a casual evening with friends, and you want everyone to be playing on an equal basis, people are not all equally skilled, you're gonna want a game with a high randomness or luck factor in it. Mm. If on the other hand, you want it to be a real test of who can figure out how to win, then you're gonna want a game with less luck and more skill. Mm. You know, I would say chess is at one end of the spectrum, right, that there's no luck involved. Mm. Um, and there are other games where you really don't even have any decisions. You just roll your die and move your piece. And so whoever wins, it's completely coincidental and has no skill level attached. Uh, so there, you know, there are those extremes and then there are all points in between. Excellent. No, that's, that's yeah, that's, that's interesting to think of it that way and think of the different categories there can be out there and levels. What, what might attract someone to a game mm -hmm. and definitely repel them from another game or whatever. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and the other thing that I, the other reason I would say we're in a golden age of board games is that um, people have developed different mechanics for games that didn't exist in the days of Monopoly or at least weren't, you know, weren't prevalent in games at the time. For instance, there's a great game called Dominion. Hmm. It is what's called the deck building game. Hmm. So you start with a deck of only 10 cards. And over the course of the game, you get rid of some of those cards and you acquire other cards to make your deck more and more powerful. Hmm. Um, and until Dominion came along, I had never seen a game like that. Hmm. So the, the developer of that game... Um, you know, experienced wildly successful development career <laughs> well, <definitely. laughs> because he, he came up with a new, mm. a new mechanism for a game that no one had, had thought of before. Mm. And now there are deck builders all over the place, sure. Oh, sure. but there's one person who figured out that mechanic first and wow. said, Hey, this would be an interesting way to play a game. And it, it surely was. Or it makes for a dramatic increase in additional games and, and all that other directions you could go with the same concept and all yep, that. Right? Yep. Yep. I, you know, you can, that, that's another thing is uh, games have themes, right? Mm -hmm. And some of them are pasted on and some of them are, the theme is more built into the game. Mm -hmm. So depending on how important the theme is to you, you could find a deck builder where the theme is really built into it somehow, or you could find another deck builder where the theme is just sort of pasted on. Uh, um, I tend to be more interested in what can this game piece do for me as opposed to its backstory. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I played Magic the Gathering very seriously for mm -hmm. several years. I don't anymore. I still play casually, but not very often. Um, but my wife would always laugh because the cards come with beautiful art and most of them have flavor text. I wouldn't even read the flavor text. 
Uh, she's saying, oh, look, there's a nice little poem on this card. And I said, I never noticed. I just noticed that it could give one of my creatures plus three, plus three. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> uh, I was interested in function and she was interested in form, I guess you could uh, say. Sure. <laughs> I, think, I think about that even in a... Um... In a very simplified way, you know, when you have any kind of, you know, movie that comes out or anything, people try to slap it on one of the old standard games, you know, you get your variations on Monopoly or things, you know, <laughs> it's just like it's Star Wars yeah. Monopoly or it's whatever yeah, and, Monopoly. And, you know, I've, I have felt bad before because I don't want to be like a game snob or a game elitist. Mm -hmm. And I've had somebody say, oh, yeah, you know, um, my family used to really like playing Monopoly. <laughs> I know Monopoly is a really kind of a crappy game, <laughs> but I don't want to say that because I have fond memories of playing Monopoly with my mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. Instead, what I try to say, because I've slipped up a couple of times and said, oh yeah, that's a sucky game, <laughs> which kind of closes off the conversation is the opposite of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I've realized that what I should be saying is, you know, there are a lot of great games out there. And if you wanted to get together, we could probably show you some new games that you mm -hmm. might enjoy as much or more than Monopoly. Oh, sure. And I think the valuable lesson about Monopoly is that, yes, it's not a very well-designed game, but what it shows you is that a lot of your enjoyment has to do with who you're playing with. Mm. I, I would say a bad game with a fun group of people is better than a good game with... Um, well, I don't want to say people you don't like, because I like everyone, but no. <laughs> when you go to cons, right, and you play at Origins or Gen Con, and you play with random people, you can play the same game twice and have a very different experience, depending on just how fun the group is. Oh, uh, sure. Um, and it's kind of independent of how good the game is and how, um, and whether you win, which is not really... You know, I'm, I'm incredibly competitive on a basketball court. Mm. When I'm playing a board game, I really don't, I'm really not. Uh, um, you know, I, I don't get, I'll, I'll complain if the dice don't go my way or whatever, but not any more than the next guy. Whereas on a basketball court, when things go wrong, I am very vocal <laughs> and very profane <laughs> and not a very nice person. <laughs> so, um, but with board games, I'm a lot more casual, so... In, in your element that you can control yourself yes, in that way. <laughs> well, I don't know why basketball matters so much more to me that it's different because even when I play other sports, I'm not like that. But when I get on a basketball court, everything changes and wow. I'm not, I'm not proud of it, but it is something that I acknowledge to be true of myself. Mm -hmm. That's where the, where the passion hits a, a high note there. Or something. That's yeah, right. I think so. <laughs> I, I think it's because I was not a natural athlete. And I had to work really hard to become a good basketball player. Mm. And when things don't, and I don't get mad at my teammates, mm. or at least I sometimes I do, but I don't, I don't show that. I get mad at myself. Oh, I sure. throw the ball away. I am going to cuss myself loudly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think most people think it's funny. Or yeah, I've had one person say, "I like the intensity," mm. but sometimes I feel like, "Geez, what are you five years old? Can you control yourself?" <laughs> That's the thing. Sometimes we we are so caught up in what we're doing, we we can't stop that, right? Right. Yeah. But at yeah. Least, yeah. At least you're not at least you're not throwing the ball around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, I have occasionally kicked a basketball to the rafters. 